Welcome to the conversations of Lord Shu and Zamora. This would technically be episode one. I'm Zamora and I'm the owner of Olive Beth Artistry. Um, the mission of my business is to aid people and connecting to their divinity and their inner child, aid them in expressing themselves creatively, whether that's through music, art, um, whatever form of expression that you feel comfortable with. And through that form of expression, you will connect more to your inner child. You can find me on Instagram at i.am.zamora and on Facebook at Zamora Gisrael. And on those pages, you'll be able to find my business pages. What it do, everybody? Y'all know who it is, the most recognizable voice in the upcoming podcast world. It's Laura Shu. I am a mentor, artist, and polymath, widely known in the business community, entrepreneurship community, uh, cigar community. I mean, you name it, I've dabbled in it somewhat. <laughs> Also, uh, you can check me out on my website where it all goes down, shoelovesrebels.com. Uh, more than likely, inside of this podcast episode, all of this information will be in a description box somewhere, whatever platform this is on. We appreciate you for listening today. Today, we're going to have some very insightful conversation, starting with our normal meeting subjects and breaking down what things that we can build on as far as some more business and then after that we just kind of shoot the shit for a while so stay tuned hope y'all enjoy <laughs> if this is your first time on our channel please subscribe stick around leave a comment and also don't forget to like because why wouldn't you do that so let's get into it some more um as far as like my business stuff as of right now my last event was um really good my last event was at house plant collective which is the um store like a plant store in birmingham alabama i'm from birmingham alabama and um this is my first time going to the store and it was like the energy was amazing um and i expected it to be because of all the plants and stuff like that and it was another artist there um she was an esthetician and stuff like that so I got to talk to some really um, cool people. And it was just like overall a really nice experience. Um, normally when I do events, I like to have plants on my table or around my table. So with that one, I didn't have to bring any plants. So it was kind of like, it was the perfect kind of setup for me. Like I felt happy the whole time during that one. It's not really anything else I wanted to touch on. Well, I mean, I did want to change. Right now I'm in like a transition period. Mm -hmm. um where I kind of want to change some things around because I am moving now I just have to think more about like really shipping things back here because I have more of a clientele here than introducing other aspects into my business to kind of keep the newsletter going mm -hmm. but with different things like I wanted to introduce like Posting more stuff on YouTube and really building a community with my business, building that community through YouTube, maybe Instagram reels and stuff like that. I already do the Instagram reels, but just kind of like introducing more things so that people can get like more immersed into the experience of Olivet Artistry, which has like a big family aspect. I want to embrace more of that energy. And like right now, I've already taken pictures of like um the customers and stuff like that and like my little sisters are normally in the reels and stuff like that but yeah just expanding that aspect overall that's where my focus is now I think YouTube will be really good as far as expressing maybe TikTok too so that more people can kind of get into the experience and okay so with you weren't like focusing on making sure that you ship into customers here well on this side of, of the United States that's that's good um my only thing is make sure that you cover all everything you do everything don't leave it up to anybody else to fulfill your orders or not like that unless it's me but other than that don't don't leave it up to nobody else because they're not going to care enough to make sure that it's done right and it, you might mess around and end up screwing a customer over on accident so oh you mean like as far as um like how some people ship their products to a place. No, I mean like letting somebody else fulfill the orders for you. Like uh, 
like oh, you like somebody else like, hey ma you can send this like leave an inventory over there and stuff like mm -hmm. that or i mean if you have to in the beginning then just get all that out the way you might want to sell all that shit now yeah but once you got rid of any inventory you have in alabama you need to focus on like you said focus on finding a way where you can fulfill orders from where you went because yeah we don't yeah. want no problems zero problems Definitely. I did ask you about like your life path number before we got on here. I remember there was one, but I needed like a little bit more clarification. Mm -hmm. But my life path number is a six. And so when you add the six and the one, that adds to seven. Um, For some reason, I just wanted to combine them to see what our number was and stuff like that. So the seven deals with like um, spirituality, wisdom, um, Problem solving is also associated with the chariot in tarot. Um, and when you break it down, it's normally broken down into like a three and a four. Three represents creativity and four is practicality. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was very significant because both of us are creatives and like our purpose in coming together was to um, help me in building my business, which in turn... Um, it seems like it's helping you out build your business as well. So that's like the practical part and stuff like that. And it's also a number of like a healer and stuff like that. And um, right now our ages are, I'm 22, she was 23. Um, when you add 33, I'm sorry, <laughs> 33. When you add those together, you get 55, which of course like automatically made me think of like change and stuff like that. And like ever since um, we've come together in general, there's been a lot of change and transformation, especially in my life. <laughs> like it's been a lot in my life. That's normally how it is for me, though. That's cool how you broke all that down. Yeah. And then when you add the 55 together, because 11, 22 and 33, that's the master numbers. I think that's just it. So. When you add the 55 together, you get a 10, which goes back to you, Shu. Um, cause yours is 10 before it breaks down to one, right? I believe so. Yes, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so one, of course, it's about like leadership and stuff like that. And I automatically thought about the creator too, because, um, it made me think about Aleph, which is the first letter of mm -hmm. the Hebrew alphabet and also the first part of my business. So that was a part of me. That was like one of the reasons why I put Olive in my business to represent um, the creator. And then Beth is um, the introduction of duality, which is yin and yang, masculine and feminine energy, stuff like that. And yeah, so it kind of, that part, the 55 also goes back to like how we're both creators and stuff like that. So that was like a cool synchronicity. And then I was, then I went a little bit further, just a little bit. And I was saying when I turned 23, um, you'll still be 33 because I turned 23 this upcoming August and we'll be a 56 when we add the ages together. And so the 56 is associated with change, transformation and progress. And when you condense that one, you get master number 11. And so when you usually get the master numbers, you keep them as is. But the 11 is basically like the two in like a higher aspect. Um, two deals with like collaboration, influence, um, instinct, stuff like that. 11 is like spiritual awareness, um, intelligence, intuitiveness. Um, to me, 11 reminds me of like portals and stuff like that. Whenever I see ones, I think of a portal especially like a lot of people they point out like 11 11 so I always think of like a portal when I see ones and stuff like that or both of us can use like artistic creativity and spiritual knowledge to heal and inspire others through master number 11 so basically like these numbers can like aid us in like uh progressing our relationship and like I can get us into like the higher aspects of our relationship we can really take advantage of like the the um like the codes that are in there i'm kind of saying like good words but <laughs> nah, i feel like, exactly what you're saying actually uh, i know you do but <laughs> i'm trying to think about the viewer <laughs> like if somebody were to listen to this but you know the people that get it they'll get it but people that don't well, you know 
I I would say it like this. Uh, with well, first I actually do have some things I wanted to say about that. Yeah, which, which is cool. Together? So you spoke about the chariot, which uh, the chariot is actually um very occult card. So okay. the chariot has the will, and for all you Bible people and just spiritual people in general know like about the will and why it's important. Um, I'll even go to say like the will of fortune, like the TV show. Yeah. Wills are significant to humanity because uh, it reminds me of the Uros Buros, which is the snake that eats his tail, the infinite symbol of so the soul essentially. So I just think about those different aspects in regards to what we're talking about. You talk about the number 11 being a portal, you know, Oros Boros is essentially a portal as well. The wheel is a portal. And also when we talk about the chariot, the chariot has two pillars that look like the number 11. Uh, mm -hmm. The pillars have names as well, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to go too deep. <laughs> y'all can, can do your own research. <laughs> Yeah, the two pillars that represent the light and the darkness and also uh, the checkerboard. And there's two sphinx on the chariot car that's pulling the chariot. Okay. There's so many different symbolisms that wrap all this up. And the chariot is ruled by cancer, which is a mothering, mothering energy. Yes. Family. Yeah. So. Which ties back to my stuff, which makes a lot of sense because six is like, I think it's also like it's definitely one of the healer Six numbers. Is the nurturer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And I got a cancer rising. So, so it all goes together. That's why we divide the <laughs> Yeah, that's why we're dividing the line because all of this stuff kind of just yeah, goes together. But yeah, overall the, the eleven is like duality to like how you kind of express the uh, two pillars and all of that. I didn't really yeah. think about the, the visual of like the you know, I got to give them the visual. Yeah. <laughs> you got no video, <laughs> no, unfortunately. That's so yeah, that's crazy. Soon, <laughs> you, know, you said what? So the video is coming soon, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that was like associated with the seven. So it's crazy how like the 11 kind of like, was kind of like included in that. And then, yep, seven, 11. Um, so yeah, so like our relationship will kind of like, it'll transform over time. Like right now we going through a transition, which we'll get to later. We'll be able to use these numbers to aid us on our journey. I did mention like healing and stuff like that a lot. And me and you both identify as healers. So like one of my questions was, um, when did you start identifying as a healer? And when I do go into my questions, um, I'll ask, I'll answer the same question. And it'll just be like, you know, a conversational piece or whatever. But yeah, when did you start identifying as a healer? Like at what point in time? Um, actually, I don't think I ever identified as one. I think I just was art. Like I came into the world kind of already healing. Um, yeah. Just I say that to I, I'll give you an example why. Um, when I was born. My family was living, well, my dad is not from America, for people that don't know. And I'm kind of just going a little bit into my life, but uh, my dad's not from America. He's actually was born in uh, Central America. So he, uh, he kind of, his family was kind of a little bit broken. And uh, my parents, uh, my mom, she is from well, she was born in Missouri, but she's from Blaville, Arkansas, which is where I was born. And, uh, you know, I would say a series of fates brought these people together because you got to think my dad was born in Central America and my mom was born at the time. It wasn't as what as bad as it is now. You know, where I was born, got a special on TV for being had having the highest crime rate in the country. Mm -hmm. So you just think, like, how do how do these two people end up together? And I just think always back, like, well, I always tell people that you choose what level of life that you live, whether it be really easy or really hard, you still make that choice. And that was one thing I always thought about, even as a kid, like I brought these people together. My essence brought these people together because yeah. I'm here now. And because of me, my parents became the best people they could be. 
And essentially, I heal them for most of their traumas. Even to this day, I work on healing them. And also just people in general that come in contact with me, whether it be like kids, older people. Um, I was always the happy-go-lucky kid. I was quiet. I didn't really cry a lot. So people just was always like, man, he's always at peace. And I ended up getting a nickname Buddha as a little kid. So mm. it's just, just like, it's just in me. It's just from the start. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, you just say, like, it's always there. And, like, I do think for healers, like, that is, <clears throat> like, naturally yeah. ace, that is kind of, like, always there. Um, but for me, I didn't really start identifying, like literally saying I'm a healer until like 2021, um, when I did start my business and stuff, because that's when I kind of like became more aware of what I was doing and like putting more attention into it. Like me saying it now is like intentionally, uh, um, putting healing energies out there and stuff like that instead of just like I don't know to me it just like it's better to I guess it aligns with like my life path and stuff it, the the nurture how you were saying that and stuff like that it kind of goes hand in hand so for me identifying as a healer it just kind of like helps me but yeah 2021 was like the time for me you recently um released a blog post on july 17th um it's on your website what's the website uh actually you could just go to shoelovesrebels.com and go to the vlog tab or blog tab it probably says blog and just click that i just started blogging like literally like she said a couple of days ago <laughs> <laughs> yeah you only have like two so far but um so like um because I wrote notes on this okay so <laughs> I'm kind of like reading some of my notes but um I wrote down as I read your blog post about how you discovered your purpose um I saw how you made a great point about showing up from the heart you connected your purpose in your heart and it reminded me of this video I watched titled um there was this video I watched recently titled al Kibalon 44 and King Simon Synchronicity and University universal alignment um they talk about how the heart is a vortex and the center point of um the vibratory universe and um i wrote down so basically when you are living in your purpose you are aligned with the divine and the universe which is connected to the heart and like even in the bible is saying like how the heart is like the center of all things like that's connected to like source energy and I just thought that was like um, a really good point that you made. And like, as I live and stuff like that, um, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing. And I feel like it's part of my purpose is to help people connect to um, their heart more and source energy and stuff like that. Um, you had also talked about like how you were afraid of expressing your gifts at first. You were talking about like... Um, speaking and writing and I wonder like why were you afraid of expressing your gifts you mentioned that in the blog post it's a good question yeah um naturally well I would say I always say this to other people that meet me I was destined to fail I mean most people are we are born into a world of distractions so just that in itself like started out from watching cartoons and eating candies and cookies and shit like that like i was i was set up to fail i didn't have uh i didn't have the people around me that in the beginning were able to really guide me because i've always been so uh from the heart i i actually think about all the time uh whenever whenever uh I talk about the heart. I always think of the picture I used to see when I was a kid of Jesus and he would have like a, a heart and it would be like on fire. And I always think about that picture. Like, I want to be like that guy. Everybody thought Jesus was cool. Everybody thought Jesus was just the dopest dude. And he was just doing like all these things, like people were selling stuff you know, in holy areas and he just flipping tables over and shit. Like, nah, y'all ain't doing this. It ain't going down like that. Like Jesus was a rebel. 
So mm -hmm. my whole life, I just always felt like the rebel. And that actually made me scared a lot of the times as well, because when you know something's not right, a lot of people always try to make you like push your truth down. And for a long time, I struggled with that. I struggled with speaking the truth because people, you know, you worried about either people's feelings or you worried about people receiving the truth the wrong way. And then after a while, you know, it just got to be like too much for me where I just couldn't even, I would just be quiet or I would talk to my mom. I would always talk to her about like, why, why did people kill Jesus? I used to always ask, like, why would they kill this dude? This cool ass dude that just basically healing people and giving people the word, telling people about God, like God sounds cool too. This dude's murking everything, like flooding <laughs> out worlds and shit. And <laughs> but y'all killing, like what the fuck? And the people that was like talking about him killed them. So I'm like, why is this happening? And it's like, cause Jesus was just too, he was telling the truth too much. You gotta think, like, imagine Jesus in modern times right now. Imagine him being like a dude that'd be like, bro, why you acting like a bitch for? Like, stop being a little <laughs> hoe. Like, basically, that's how Jesus was. He was just too truthful. And people couldn't, they couldn't deal with that. And I used to always be scared of that. Like, they gonna kill me, bro. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, because I be having stuff like that, too, in the back of my mind. Like, I know I'm protected, but a part of me is a little part of me that's like, that be on guard or feel like, what if they kill me? Like, as I grow and, like, as I um start to be on my life path more, because it's, like, the opposite of what, society like what they normally used to and that's the thing like people are very comfortable and that's what they're really fighting like they want to stay in that yeah, comfortability yeah. and a lot of people don't really like change unless it has to do with you know something that <laughs> they just don't really like like change in general and oh I was gonna say like um doesn't your name um shoe doesn't it align with Jesus also though yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. funny, <laughs> but yeah. I, I think Jesus has been around me my whole life and from the very beginning, which is weird because I'm not like, uh, you know how people like worship, like, oh my God, like, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think me and Jesus <laughs> relationship, like, it's more like, you're like, Alani. Alani. like a family member. <laughs> and that's how it's supposed to be, like a yeah. lot of people. They say fear God, but I don't believe in that. Like, if you're fearing God, then you must be sinning like, like crazy. Like, you know, like you, <laughs> <laughs> like you must be the opposite if you're fearing God. Like, only you know, a demon should fear God. Should. You said what? Only a demon should fear God, and really, yeah, it's like you're supposed to be aligning with that energy, with source energy. What are you gonna say? I just feel like all spirit, any spirit that's like and not on the positive gets a bad rap too. I just wanted to say that, like. If if all these things they all come from that same energy, so you know, it just it it all depends on what your outlook on life is. Like, yeah. we're not here to be like, hey, you should follow Jesus or whatever. I I don't even know what it is because Jesus is more like like one of my ancestors. I I don't look at Jesus like, oh, this is some like dude who lives in the sky and just like, yeah, pissing out magical powers on people. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's deeper than that for me like y'all reading the book is way deeper than that for me like i'm i'm tapping into a part of myself like my dna so yeah and then like as far as the darker energies like yin and yang yeah. this for a reason and it's like i wouldn't be even though you know i'll be cutting people off and like <laughs> like not associated with certain people i wouldn't be who i am without those darker energies making me stronger like sure. without those darker energies challenging me and like everybody has like a shadow side so to completely do away with the dark energy like that means you're doing away with the aspect of yourself yeah and that actually can cause way more damage than uh trying to man i you know what i i wouldn't even consider myself like a spiritualist or anything but i just i just want to say all you love and light people y'all y'all giving this uh Y'all giving spirituality of self a bad rap because y'all just think that everything is like rainbows and unicorns and ice cream and cake and mm -hmm. shit. But over time, it, it changes though. Like those people, <laughs> over time, they start they to be capping. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like that, but that's Not the cap. 
yeah, it's usually like that at the beginning, and then over time, it kind of just like fizzles out. Because when you some legends though, they be on that shit. They be on that level. Like, you said like, what? If you who? be legends, people who've been in the, in the spiritual community would consider themselves a cultist and all that shit. Be on that level, like shit. I'm like, yo. I just seen a dime a dozen it's still around these days, man. But I just think it's it's a healthy balance, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't eat McDonald's every day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Gotta gotta have a balance, man. Yeah, and then so like yeah, so I asked you why were you afraid of expressing your gifts? And then for me, I kind of have like a similar experience. Um where people didn't really like me for speaking the truth. And I kind of always been that way. Like I used to point out people when we used to go to daycare and stuff like that, like people literally used to treat me and my siblings like shit. (laughs) But like when I would point it out, like adults would lie or um, my mom just like didn't always believe me when it came to certain stuff. And like as I grew older and started expressing myself even when I started my business and stuff like I had certain um um, family members or a family member and stuff that didn't really like what I was doing and stuff like that and it actually did it had more of a an effect than I thought but you know I realized like even I had mentioned that video earlier that I had watched yesterday about like synchronicity and alignment and stuff like that. And one of the guys in there, I think it was Akiva Line 44, he was talking about how he was afraid of speaking to something first or he had challenges with that. It was two guys on there that had challenges with that, but those people that really be having challenges with it, like you're meant to overcome those challenges. And he was saying like he had a rising in Aquarius. So he was literally meant to speak and stuff like that. And my moon is in Aquarius. So like, and air signs in general deal with communication and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. it's like, I know that I'm meant to speak and express myself and stuff like that. And for healers or like people that's on similar life paths, like it's usually stuff put into your life early on to kind of like traumatize you to keep you from, or I guess to like really challenge you. I don't want to like put it in like a more negative like sense but it kind of challenge you challenge you when it comes to like expressing your gifts and stuff like that and so yeah so like my moon is in Aquarius and like the moon is about like your soul and like deep desires and stuff like that so yeah now I'm like getting to that point where it's like I'm meant to do this and like as I express myself more I know that um I'll get deeper into like my my soul in general like my soul's purpose because I've more so been doing like art and stuff like that and painting and that's like one form of expression but it kind of keeps me (laughs) it kind of keeps me more silent in a way like I can talk to people when I talk to them at my events and stuff but it's really like me in a way it can get to me like taking the back seat so that I don't have to talk as much like kind of just put the visual out there and it's just as important but it's also important for me to write and speak and stuff like that. My next question for you, Shu, was um, do you ever feel like you were strayed away from your path or was it like this inner guide or force that always steered you in the right direction or like how would you express that? Okay, before I answer this question, I just want to say one thing. For okay. those who, who are watching that don't know what our cable line is, that is Africa. Just to let y'all know. So, okay, go ahead. <laughs> yo, this is a funny question. So, literally, my whole life, like my ancestors and uh, ascended masters, pretty much my whole spirit family has always made themselves known to me. That's, I think, once I really like started asking the questions as a kid, I kind of figured out, like, oh, I'm different. Like, I need to just keep tapping into this. I was fasting as a child and, you know, like I just fasted yesterday, actually. Uh, yeah. Fasting is really good for you. If you if you don't do it, you should probably start. This is just like a general message for everybody. Like, at least fast like once a week. I fast. Uh, I'm, I'm about to start fasting two times a week, like full days. Normally I do intermittent fasting for like 
whenever. Like, so I know one time I did like a whole year of intermittent fasting. But do you eat like fruit and stuff before you do the whole day? Like, what is the day like before you do the full day fast? What's the day like? I mean, you know, as far as like what you eat and stuff, because normally I like to start to eat fruit and stuff before I uh, go for well, what do you think? For people that don't know me i actually do not eat meat i haven't eaten meat since 2015 so i don't i'm always eating fruits and vegetables and pretty much like i said i fast like most of the day i, I normally do a 16 hour fast daily but mm -hmm. i've recently just started wanting to do full day fast like twice a week because you know i eat a lot of food like for no reason i'm just i love to eat <laughs> i kill <laughs> 3,000 calories in a day by myself, no cap. But I eat a lot. But um, before, before, the day before, I really already eat pretty, like, average. I would say it just depends. If there's, like, like something, like, cooked or something, like a whole bunch of food or, yeah, like, a festival-type dish, then I might eat a lot, but... I, I know this before this particular fast I actually stop eating at a certain time anyway. So I'll stop around six o'clock will be my last meal. And I try to always eat when the sun is at its peak anyway. So I'll break my fast normally. Just if it was just a regular day, I, I normally break my fast at 11 o'clock. So okay. that's typically I try to stay in there. But um, the reason why I spoke about fasting is because when I like like I said, I was a kid fasting. I always was tapped into my spiritual family. So they they always like, hey, you know, that they they told me about the balance as a child. So even though sometimes I would uh I would do like certain things I knew like wasn't right, I always tried to stay more towards following what was what my gut said. You know, they always like follow your heart, follow your gut. So I never felt like uh I was going drifting off because I always since day one, I've always followed my heart, always follow my gut. Like even when I knew it was going to like really be bad for me, I still follow my heart because there's a lesson to be learned here. And there's something there. There's something that you need in your life to help you upgrade yourself. So a lot of the times people think, oh, your spirit family won't like lead you into weird, crazy situations like mine. Mine's did. So, yeah, you, mine did too. Yeah. You're like you're not learning, bro. You're not understanding. You're not... Boom. Yeah. Then I'm in having like the craziest spiritual awakenings, and you know, it's just it can it can get really bad. But that's that that thing in the back of my mind always says when it feels the worst. Like I always live by if it scares you the most, go more into it. If it hurts more, go more into it. Like I just always had that like soldier mindset with stuff. So. Like, even when I was at, like, the worst points in my life, I always was laughing. And I always was, like, doing some incredible stuff, like making music. I was filming TV shows. Yeah. And I'm at the lowest, like, what some people would consider that. But I'm making money, like. Yeah. And then it just puts things into perspective. Like, hey, yeah, work. you got to see this, the bigger picture. That's that's why I always feel like they always with me, because they always make me see the bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah, like sometimes like I could be this point in my life where I was like so depressed and down, but I was making like huge moves and like stuff, horrible things or other things were like happening in the background. But like these like big moves were happening, like illustrating a book and all of that stuff. That's so crazy how that worked. But that's how I know. That's how I knew that I was like an alchemist because. Yep. Even when, <laughs> yeah, even when, like, I was younger, sometimes I wanted to create art pieces that were, like, like, I, you know how people, they create, like, them dark pieces, like, you know, they be looking, like, <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> they be, like, dark, like, like of dark eyes and, uh, yeah, morbid and, like, scary and all that stuff. I was, like, sometimes I'll be upset and I'm, like, I want to create that. But every time I would sit down and create an art piece, it would come out to this beautiful Some happy <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> like, how did I go from <laughs> I'm like, how did I go from angry to flowers? And like 
like that's how stuff would be for me and I'm like damn okay yeah I'm an alchemist so yeah that was crazy yeah so yeah the question was like do you feel like you were ever strayed away from your path and your answer was no because you had like your spirit team there and stuff like that I guess in my life I've kind of um seen what I thought would be people straight off of their path but to be honest like when you look at the bigger picture it don't really seem that way but like for example me like you have went into your diet and stuff and I have always been a vegetarian because my mom was a vegetarian when she was pregnant with me like she was literally like how you said that your energy like influenced your people to come together and all that stuff it was literally the same for me like my mom she was um she started to kind of become a vegetarian with the child that was born before me and then with me she was like fully a vegetarian so I've been a vegetarian my whole life and when they used to feed try to feed me meat when I was younger like eggs or something I would throw up so like it literally like doesn't align with my system and like that could it was definitely probably (laughs) part of the reason why like I am who I am and why my brain kind of works the way that it works and stuff like that like it's probably part of the reason I can't say that you know because of course there's people out there who eat meat and they're like also um you know powerful and they are very intelligent and stuff like that but I would say that it plays a part in who I am and like my lifestyle compared to my other family members who eat meat and do all this other stuff but yeah so it definitely played a part and I guess I kind of looked at my parents and I was kind of confused or felt like you know they possibly sometimes straight off their path because when I was born like they were studying you know eating well and stuff like that but then after that, you know, it kind of just all went away. <laughs> and so it's like, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, what happened? Because as I grow older, I'm like, stuff just kind of like changing. You know, people, they go through their life and they like, they have their changes and stuff like that. But um, I do notice that the people who continue to kind of like stay on their path with intention, like their life kind of moves in a certain way as opposed to people who you know they were on it on a certain period period of their life and then they kind of just kind of got back in this cycle or like you know I guess went back to kind of like how they were before stuff like that I can just tell the difference in their lives but yeah yeah so for me I kind of agree with you like I don't really I wasn't necessarily um I wasn't ever straight off of my path, like, always felt, I felt more of an inner God encompassed as opposed to, um, like, a spirit team. Like, I wasn't really more aware of that until, like, 2020 and all of that, even though they were there, of course, and they were giving me signs and all of this stuff, I felt more of an inner guidance and inner pool. Like, it was more so, like, my being itself that kind of kept me on the right path like I was even talking to a friend the other day and um telling her how like for me like doing good or doing certain things like it's kind of just in me because when I decide to do something like let's say I want to do something negative or do something like let's say I wanted to steal something or something like that like for me the feeling the feelings of guilt are like very intense like it's not I don't know like it's just kind of like it's like an inner feeling that I have as far as like what I do and stuff like that like yeah so it kind of like goes back (laughs) to the inner type of thing Mm -hmm. um yeah I know it's like me expressing it I kind of realized like everybody doesn't have that sometimes I used to feel like um well why don't these people do this why don't these people do that but other people they don't have that like everybody has like you know different feelings and different um you know teams and just stuff like that but 
I realized that that was a difference that I had and that other people, I never really understood why certain people would act the way that they acted, but I see more. I see more now. <laughs> I see a little bit more now. And also because different people are just able to, like some people, they grow up, like my friend, for example, some people, they grow up and their parents tell them like, you can't do, like everybody can't do the same thing. And that's true. Like some people are just able to get away with more and do other stuff like that. Were you gonna um say something true or no? Um, I was, but I'm just letting you talk right now. Yeah, but I mean that's pretty much it that I was gonna say as far as like that. Like overall, it was more of an inner thing for me, and not really more so like an outside type of thing. It was more of an inner movement. Right. Yeah, I I agree with you. Um, people do. Not everyone can do because everybody's uh, blueprint is different, obviously. I mean, yeah. you could look at some people's lives are just fucking horrible. Like, <laughs> some people have really <laughs> fucking terrible lives. Like, living straight poverty, born with AIDS or some wild shit. Like, people just have really fucked up lives. But then, like, now it's like, okay, well, now you've been given this this hard ass mission, like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> how you gonna how you gonna transmute this? How you gonna alchemize this shit? Yeah, and it's just interesting seeing some people live out their lives like fully purpose, live out their life, like the people who don't have legs or arms and shit, but somehow everybody in the world fucking knows who they are. Yeah, got their own platforms on social media. Like, how the <laughs> fuck? Who's holding the phone? <laughs> I'm just like, yo. Y'all doing, y'all doing it big. These are, this is like, should be inspiration for everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always think that like, how, how does like, when I was younger, I didn't really understand the concept until like, I got like, maybe in my teenage years, like, oh, I'm bullshitting. Like God literally t like laughing at me because I'm over here bitching about this. Yeah. When instead I could just be focusing on powering up, getting better at what I do. And I just started going in. I was still bitching a little bit, but eventually it just, you start realizing like, okay, everybody got some, something is trash in somebody's life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, why, why stop here and just kind of fade into obscurity? Like I was never into that. I always knew, like, even when I was scared, I always felt like I was going to be like important to people or yeah. I, I wanted to help people and, be a source of information for people like i didn't want to be joe schmo i hated how it I don't even like how it sounds now saying that next to my name joe schmo shoe like who the fuck no it don't sound right <laughs> yeah and then like oh yeah another thing for me growing up like i feel like a lot more i mean it's definitely true a lot of a lot more people around me saw my potential and like who I was before I could see it like I was always more focused on my vision like ever since I was like eight I had this goal um especially like as far as school and stuff like that like I was gonna do really well in school which I did do really well get a good career get like a good house and all that so I just had this very 3d like linear type of goal and so I was kind of like literally on a mission like I that was like I had tunnel vision on that goal, but then over time I would get treated certain ways and I would meet people. Like I literally used to have a friend. She was like, I don't know what it is about you, but I feel like you're going to be famous one day, or I feel like you're going to be somebody and stuff like that. And I was just like, mm, okay. Like, <laughs> I'm like, but she said, she was just saying that she could just like see that. And she's normally able to just like see that in people. And, like, now I can see it more, but I never really understood, yeah, like, why I was treated certain ways or, like, why people would say certain things and stuff like that. And it seems like, shoot, like, in a way, I was kind of, like, hidden from myself. Like, I knew I had these certain abilities and all of that, but I was just living, mm -hmm. like, to me, it was normal. <laughs> like, I'm like, exactly. like, I'm like, this is normal to me, but no as I grew up I'm like damn I'm really not like other people <laughs> like these people are really not like me I was literally in my own reality and that's how I knew like damn I'm probably not from here like 
I'm just like, because I was just literally in my own world. And now, like, yeah, I choose to be in my own world because, no, I'm not about to be a part of all these other people's worlds that be full of crap, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, huh? I said a pile of it. Yes. <laughs> and, like, okay, so my last question what is the most transformational um, traveling experience that you've had or like what is the first um, like trip or something that's coming to mind as I ask this question? Like what's the transformational like traveling experience that you've had? Mm, man. <laughs> coming to I, mind. Because yeah, I know you've had a lot, but, a lot, but I don't um, know. <laughs> if I had to find like a defining one, it's – I always, I think I told you about it before, actually, but we gonna get, we got it on tape this time. So, uh, during like when COVID really start popping off, like in twenty twenty, I had uh, I moved to Austin, Texas, in June. I want to say the end of May, beginning of June, and basically all I was doing was like being an artist, just wandering the city and just eating at food trucks and just smoking hella weed and drinking hella brew. It's basically all I did like the whole time I lived in Texas. I had started in Austin, Texas and drove all the way to Sedona, Arizona and a bunch of places in between. And to this day, I feel like my, I like when I talk about it now, I get that feeling like, again, like, like a part of my heart is like, I left, yeah went to space and like connected with <laughs> my like the the essence of my family's lineage out in the desert by myself didn't really know uh I, I at that time i like had hiked a lot in my life but i wasn't like leading hikes i'm usually walking with a group of people and we just kind of all like got our minds together but in this particular scenario i was like in charge of people's lives and mm-hmm. you know i'm like freaking out inside but you know they would have never known that because i'm just like i gotta stay cool but uh yeah i went to some very ancient sites and connected with some kind of energies that i don't even know but mm-hmm. very ancient i want to say like <laughs> Like very ancient tree people, tree spirits. Um, yeah. Also, uh, seen a lot of spaceships, a lot of aliens. Yeah, you said you had um, you got a uh, what is it? The crystal that's formed. Oh the- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah actually, no. So, I when I was living in Austin, Texas, I was making these uh, organ pyramids, which I don't know if I should say organ energy because that's like a, a word to trigger elites and people come up missing over shit like that. But I was making organ pyramids for people <laughs> to block out energy. Don't kill me, government. <laughs> Fuck you, government. All right. But anyways, <laughs> so I took some of I took four little pieces of uh, petrified wood, which that's the crystal she's talking about, y'all. I got a a piece of petrified wood, which is a tree so old that it turned into rock. It turned into a crystal. Mm -hmm. But I took some of it and put it inside of the Oregon pyramid with some roses and um, some jasper and quartz and some copper wire. And I just like twirled the copper wire, kind of make like a, like a battery. I had to take it out of my car because I just sold my car recently. But um, this was in the back. I, I usually keep this in the car with me to, you know, keep, keep the energy good. But, yeah, I I was just, uh, I don't know. That trip, like, still kind of, I don't know. I, there's something that happened there that I uh-huh. just don't really understand 100% because, People will be like, oh, man, you went to, like, Florida and you changed or whatever. Like, my brother was saying that earlier today. <laughs> and I was like, boy, shut up. That ain't true. <laughs> but, Maybe he um, saw the change. Maybe that's when he started to see some. Nah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it was. But, no, nah, he was, he was uh, <laughs> when I was in Florida, I party a lot. I mean, all I do is party for real. Like, I'm going to just keep it real. Whenever I go out anywhere, 
there's a party or I'm about to turn whatever whatever we at into a party. I need to party more. Um yeah. <laughs> party that more. was a transformational Good experience party. for you. And I would say that's so crazy because mine is Arizona also. Like when I first went to Arizona, like I was leaving my family wasn't even really talking to my family as much at that time when I was leaving. It was just a very transformational moment. And like, yeah, I also went to Sedona, which was very nice. I went to like this really nice nature spot where it was like water and stuff like that. And um, went to a crystal shop where I could really feel a whole bunch of energy there. Like it was a lot of energy there. And then it was a lot of ravens like in Sedona, like it's so many in the city and stuff like that and even in Arizona um like I used to hike every morning and um watch the sunrise which was so beautiful and used to feed the chipmunks um and squirrels used to feed them almonds and stuff like that in the morning but um one thing that became really significant to me was the bird the um the hummingbird um and those symbolize like miracles to me but it's so many of those in Arizona like you see them a lot more than you see them down south or at least for me and that was really significant and then one day when I was hiking I also um saw a coyote and we made eye contact and that was like a very significant moment for me because I don't normally see like really big animals out in the wild and stuff like that but I also haven't been like out out there as much like the most that I've seen so far is like deer and stuff like that but we made eye contact and that was like a very significant moment it felt like I could feel the energy in that moment like it felt like time stopped and stuff like that and so got to Sedona and then it just felt like this whole scavenger hunt like I literally made a vision board before I moved like I was really moving to Phoenix and then I traveled to Arizona I made this whole vision board and I was literally going to specific places on the vision board like it was one picture that I had it was it was the address of like a resort there and um I didn't really expect to go there it was just like a really nice picture but pulled into the resort place and it was and the first thing that I see one of the first things that I see is a freaking hummingbird and it was just like it was like very significant moments and it was like um more proof of like my manifestation power and stuff like that but got to Sedona was there for a few days and stuff like that and then I was just kind of like led back to um North Carolina which I stayed there but overall like it felt like a whole journey like that those moments I kind of like identify with like my journey of being an alchemist or it reminds me of in the book how the alchemist went on his journey because I thought that I was gonna like I don't know I really didn't know how long I was gonna stay in Arizona but he literally went to Egypt he went to the desert and everything and it just it felt literally the same but um spoiler alert um for the book if you don't want to listen to this part, you might want to skip a little bit. But um, in the end, like he gets the message that um, his treasure is really back at home. Like the treasure he was looking be- looking for the whole time was like back at home. And like that really reminds me of my journey. And it's like for me and everything is always like an internal journal journey. But for me, like my journey was very internal and um, now I'm back home in Alabama and I'm about to leave again. But I would say that the treasure that I found was like back at home, but really inside of me because that's where I found like, like a lot of my potential and abilities and like how my life really could be and like my inner power and stuff like that. So yeah. That trip was very transformational for me. It was like a scavenger hunt. And it's like I went around this whole traveling back and forth across the country and all of that. So that was pretty cool.
That was pretty cool. So yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of ups and downs, but <laughs> yeah, it was. And like, I normally like try to look towards the positive when it comes to a lot of stuff. Like, I don't like to like negative stuff. Of course, it's gonna happen. Certain stuff is gonna be there, but I like to be more in that positive energy. So it was a really good experience for me, and that's why I like being more by myself or with one other person so that I can keep that energy going. Um, I just had a lot of experiences in my life where a lot of people, they want to be negative or be in that low energy. Yeah. But yeah, so it helped me to be on that journey with like um, just one other person and like being able to keep that positive energy going. Like it made the experience a whole lot better for me. So yeah, it was, it was. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I know uh, when I was on my way to New Mexico, well, no, when I was in Albuquerque, I was staying in this like Pueblo house that it was like an Airbnb, but it was a Pueblo. I don't even know how, to, I don't know. Yeah. But exactly. when I was staying there, there, I had captured a picture of two hummingbirds, like what? together. Yeah, it was two of them. I, still, I can send it to you right now, bro. I still have this. <laughs> That's why I was like, damn. <laughs> this shit is true. Oh, I love them. Yeah, man. That is just true. Magical. Tricky. Magical. Because they, like, really in between both worlds or two worlds. Like, they're very, oh. they're so light and colorful and beautiful. I think in Native American culture, they see them as, like, messengers. Yeah, that's that's how I look at them. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know. Birds just, in general. Mm-hmm. And I be speaking to birds and everything, and I just sold um my hummingbird necklace. So that was amazing. That was amazing and definitely in alignment and stuff like that. We got that picture. I can't wait to see that picture. But that was that was my last question. These were good questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like <laughs> I knew they were gonna be good questions. I like, I like the type. A hundred of them. <laughs> I I'm, like the type of energy we be having. These, yeah, these were awesome. I'm glad it wasn't like fifty questions either. Yeah, no, nah, because we talk a lot. Y'all just watched. Uh, well, the first episode with Laura Shoot and Zamora. Um, this was fun and also very interesting. And click the like button. Leave a comment. Let us know how we can make these episodes better. And also subscribe because you tripping if you ain't already subscribed after the first question she asked me. So, <laughs> I'm Laura Shu. I'm Zamora. We out this bitch. <laughs>